Kieran Gillen and Guiyu Villanova explore what's next for the Eternals as the god Ajax Celestia sets them on their new heroic path. Kieran Gillen rounds out his fantastic Judgment Day event with an Omega issue that caps off a lot of the remaining plot points and sets out the Eternals on a really interesting new journey. Gillen finishes out his time on Eternals without missing a beat, continuing the slightly dour, depressing nature of the race that he's been wonderfully capturing through his entire run and this event, but then finally giving them the hope and the spark of life they have been striving for in the end. He also, for one final time, posits the idea that the Eternals are not the perfect race the Celestials thought they were because they are forever and nothing perfect lasts forever which is just a wonderful analogy for the Eternals as a whole. Gillen leaves the group in a really cool position as well leaving them all to walk with the humans and protect them from the shadows effectively giving Icarus, Sprite, Fastos, Athena and others all secret identities to hide out in plain sight to help. It's a great development for them and one I'd really like to see continue since Marvel doesn't really have a lot of heroes who have secret identities so a whole team of them would actually be really cool. Guiyu Villanova finishes up Judgment Day with some personal character focused artwork that does a great job conveying the raw emotions a lot of these characters have, especially the scenes with Icarus and Sophia Robson, both sharing their grief with one another and not shying away from the fact that grief can be violent and ugly, which I really appreciated. Judgment Day Omega Issue 1 wonderfully wrapped up Kieran Gillen's time with the Eternals along with his hanging plot points, leaving the Eternals in a place that is extremely interesting character-wise and one I would hope to see more of in the future. I am going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Judgment Day Omega Issue 1 sees Machine finding Makari riding in the Temple of Ajax Celestia, recounting the story of Judgment Day and how Ajax stood against the progenitor, rejecting the god she helped create only to become a god herself. Ajax asks if Makari is done and the speedster is, finishing the first book of Ajax Celestia, asking what the second will be. Ajax says that it will be heresy, as in New York. Toby Robson's mother Sophia answers the door to find Icarus waiting for her. She immediately begins beating up the Eternal to no avail, rushing into the kitchen to grab a knife to stab him with, but the knife breaks against his skin. He tells the grieving mother that he didn't know her son would die as she throws a boiling pan at him, burning herself in the process. She demands to know if she can do anything to hurt him, but Icarus knows that he can't be hurt more than he already is, but she can keep going if she wants. She asks if it makes him feel better, but Icarus says it doesn't, collapsing on the floor with a woman to grieve. In London, Sally is met by the huge Hex Sion, who wants to speak to certain humans before returning to the armory. Sally being one of them. Sion finds it nice to meet the woman, telling her of her poetry and her zine. Sally knows all about the killer and what it did to the mutants, finding it killing them then joining them a little messed up. Sion agrees and if they are released again, they would do it again, so they hope that this is the last time the world has to see it and its kin. Sion asks if they are released again, she wants to be able to share its poems with Sally, her children and her children's children. After a moment of consideration, Sally agrees to do it as Sion leaves looking forward to the possibility of reading Sally's Zion she intends on publishing, knowing that it will be great. At Ajax Temple, Aphastos asks if Eros will be joining them, but the Eternal declines the offer since there is much work to be done with Zorus, since if they are to save their people, he cannot abandon them and his parents need to be freed and maybe a new Titan needs to be made. He tells the others it's up to them to prove their new way of living for Eternals can work, and if they need him, he'll be there, but Eros finds himself scared of Ajax. Kingo is also scared of the woman as well, asking Fastos if they have a shot at real change, and Fastos says that Cersei is dead and the machine can't bring her back, which should have been enough to destabilize and destroy the machine, but it didn't, so this is a miracle and change enough to begin with, and they can hope for more. The Eternals visit Ajax under the statue of Cersei, telling her that Gilgamesh and the Forgotten won't be coming since they can't let go of their vengeance, and will continue to police the Eternals and not trust any Celestials. Ajax thinks that that is right, and it is possible to have too much faith faith in one's unproven god, hoping that they will watch her closely. Ajax says that Cersei was a martyr and a flawed vessel, which is the point since they are not made to be perfect, they are made to be eternal. Ajax vows to be a better god if the Eternals vow to be better Eternals, as Sprite asks what they have to do now. Ajax knows that humans rightly hate them and they owe them their lives, so it's their penance to walk amongst the humans and it's not enough to follow the principles anymore. In the exclusion, Uranus continues to beat Droog as his punishment 
punishment as Zerus tells him that part of the peace treaty with Arrakai means they granted access to Euronos to them for one hour of their choosing. Euronos is glad that he might get out again as Zerus knows that he'll be serving those who hate him. Euronos doesn't care since he'll be free and until then he's got a toy to pass the time with, returning to his torture of Droog. In Lemuria, Crow sees Thena off, learning that she is moving out of the city. Thena overhears some singing, wondering what it is so Crow tells her it's prayer, something new to the Deviants. He wonders if Ajak will free them from the excess deviation curse and Thena knows that Ajak has promised to find a way and if not, they will continue to find one eventually and that's her vow to him. Crow finds it funny that she's always so serious, knowing that if she does change, she shouldn't change that about her since her sincerity is part of her charm. Thena asks him if he really loved Cersei, but Crow doesn't know since if you fall in love with an Eternal, you always assume you'll be the first to die, so it removes the pressure a little bit and you won't be the one watching them drift away. He thinks that that's awful to admit, wishing that he was there when Cersei died and he barely had time to get to know her, whereas he and Thena had 20,000 years together on and off, yet their love is still a labyrinth to him. Thena wonders if he'll ever get her back and Crow doesn't really hope so, with Thena knowing that it's probably best if they just moved on. On Krakoa, Wolverine gets ready to attack the arriving Fastos, who is quick to tell the angered mutant that he is there with a message from one old friend to another. He gives Logan a seed, saying that the machine had its mind wiped but it left a message for Krakoa. Fastos takes the seed to Cypher and Krakoa, who thank him for it. Logan asks him what was on the seed and Fastos knows it's complicated, as a million years ago the Celestial Celestials arrived and transformed humans into Eternals and Deviants, using them as templates. He knows that they made the machine itself and looked for inspiration for a huge sentient system that runs through the whole planet, and found a living island already on the Earth, so they used Krakoa as the template for the machine. Fastos reveals that the message was a goodbye from the machine to its mother and father Krakoa. Elsewhere, Icarus, now sporting a bald head, returns to Sophia Robson, finding that she'll let him stay in her home. Icarus hopes that her neighbours don't learn who he really is and Sophia tells them not to let them find out and to hell if they do since they all deal with grief in their own way. She thinks that seeing him doing stuff will help and give the loss of her son meaning to her. She asks what he's going to do and Icarus thinks it's quite simple, he's going to do everything he can. Later in the pouring rain, a family try and sort out their flat tyre, finding they don't have a spare. Icarus appears, conjuring up a spare tyre and telling the family to seek shelter under a nearby tree while he quickly fixes the car. Decline the family's offer to pay him for the tire, telling them to give the money to charity or to help someone else. The father calls him a regular guardian angel and Icarus knows that's the idea, leaving the family as they realise that Icarus fixed the tire without any tools or a jack. As the Eternals begin their journey through humanity, Machine knows that, that they will walk amongst the humans protecting them and if they die, they will kill humans to be reborn. And while they are eternal, one of the things that also is eternal is shame. Icarus watches Earth from orbit as Machine knows that they are back to full operation and no malfunction remains, signing off with a winking smiley face.